The European Union is on the brink of becoming the first major power in the world to regulate artificial intelligence. Lawmakers are currently debating the planned law ahead of a vote on Wednesday. So, what's on the table? The proposed EU AI Act would see applications assigned to one of four risk categories. Uses deemed unacceptable, like China's state surveillance-driven social credit system, would be banned. AI used in critical infrastructures such as electricity would be classed high risk and subject to compliance rules. Deep fakes and bots like ChatGPT would be subject to transparency obligations. And finally, other applications like gaming would be left largely unregulated. Now, speaking during the debate in Parliament earlier, EU Vice President Marguerite Vestager described how public perceptions towards AI regulation had changed. When we started uh, our journey, I frequently got the question, why are you regulating AI? This will hamper innovation. Why do not just let it go? But I think by now everyone realizes that this is the important moment. Yes, this is the time. Let's talk more about this now with DW's Europe correspondent Rosie Burchard and AI expert Yesha Sivan, founder of the investment platform i8 Ventures. Rosie, there seems to be consensus that this is a pivotal time for regulating AI, but how to do that is the big question. Tell us about the arguments being made in Parliament. Well, lawmakers here in this room behind me are trying to hash out a new approach under which artificial intelligence uses would be classified and then regulated according to their perceived level of risk. So, for example, some uses of AI would be banned outright under these plans. For example, social scoring. Then there are other uses which would be considered high risk and therefore subject to quite hefty restrictions and regulations. Those include, for example, the use of AI in recruitment, so sifting through job applications, uses of AI when choosing which students might be able to get into university or, or the use of AI in medical devices. Now, companies wishing to sell services or product using those kind of high-risk AI tools, well, they would have to submit lots of documentation and data before their product or service can get to the market in the EU. Then there's a whole raft of other uses of AI which are seen as much lower risk. For example, the, the spam filter in your inbox or AI-enabled video games, and they basically would not be subject to any new rules. So plenty to be discussed and debated here in Strasbourg. All right, turning to you, Yasha, you do business with AI companies on the ground. What would this kind of regulation mean for them? Well, I think uh, these companies are very interested in this uh, regulation because currently the danger is great. Plus, we have failed in the past. This is an important point. We failed to regulate social network and we have suffered damage Cambridge Analytica being one case, but also something like TikTok that is uh, completely uh, making oral kids uh, a little bit uh, dumbier day by day. So the fact that we have failed in the past in a technology that is 5% of the scope and size and power of uh, AGI or artificial general intelligence means that we do need to regulate. OK, so there's a big risk in doing nothing here. But what about the argument that regulation will stifle innovation? What do you think about that, Yasha? I think on one end it will stifle innovation, but on the other end it will enable innovation because the borders will be clear what is allowed, what is not allowed. Consumers will be able to compare. You will have like a, even a, a mandatory symbol for regulated, etc. So this will allow people to select this. I want to say one more thing, uh, listening to Rosie and the way that it's being described. I think the whole method of a regulation needs to be changed. It doesn't necessarily need to be regulated forward. It can be regulated backward. So, for example, if you mandate sensors inside that reports the questions and answers all the time, then you can actually build up on the fly regulation for the system. But this is a completely new approach to the level of regulations that we need in this case. OK, so completely uncharted territory. Turning back to you, Rosie, let's talk timelines. Nothing is going to change overnight here, is it? 
Well, Kate, the European Union might be famous for its regulation, but it certainly isn't famous for speed. The rules, the proposed rules that are being debated currently, well, they were first put on the table back in 2021, so well before this most recent boom in generative AI with tools like chat, GPT. Now, moving forward, these laws are likely not to kick in for at least a couple of years, and that is why the European Union is pursuing, chasing, really, some stopgap measures in between. Those include uh, what they call an AI pact. That would be allowing companies to opt in, to fall in line with certain rules before they're actually fully legally in place. And they're also asking online platforms to voluntarily label AI-generated content with a view to trying to crack down on disinformation. Remember, we're just a year out from key European elections, the elections for this parliament. So disinformation is certainly something high on lawmakers' minds. There is a sense here of the EU trying to really race and play catch-up, though speaking to parliamentarians here, they feel that they are well-placed to do so and that they're moving ahead, they say, with legislation which they call world-leading. Yeah, on that, Rosie, this debate is being closely watched around the world. Could this law become a model for other countries to follow? I've been speaking to an EU official on this. He said that the EU is discussing this AI regulation in the context of the G7, so that club of wealthy democracies, also through a specific talks framework with the United States, and most recently in a discussion with India, with the EU's first ever trade and technology council with India. So I think it's fair to say that lawmakers and businesses around the world are watching carefully what's being debated in Strasbourg. All right, Rosie Burchard and Yasha Sivan, thank you both very much.